What's up everyone, welcome back to Amazing Dinosaurs. Today I'm showing you my collection of Lego Jurassic World figures. Plus, I've even got some new ones that we're gonna open up in a little bit. This first figure is my largest Jurassic World Lego figure. And it's not a T-Rex, but it's something similar to that. You can see the two horns on the top of its head and it's colored with the black on top and the bright red underneath. This other dinosaur in the back is the same species. It might be a Carnotaurus, something like that. But this one has the dark green on the sides instead of the red and it is a pretty large figure, only a little bit smaller than my Mattel figures. Here we've got our first T-Rex of the collection. It has some desert camo all over its body so that it'll blend in. And of course, since it's a Lego figure, you can disassemble it and put it all back together. This one over here is a strange looking one and pretty unique. This, I believe, is a Brachiosaurus and it is the only one of this species that I have. It comes in the bright blue coloring. You can see it's got battle damage all over its body. And of course it is very adjustable, but especially the neck. I haven't seen this in Lego before, but it's like this flexible thing. And at the very end is the head with an adjustable jaw. Over here, I believe, is an Indominus Rex figure. Now, this figure is not in the classic gray coloring for Indominus Rexes. It's more like the desert camo that we saw in the earlier figure, too. It's got some pretty cool coloring for a Lego piece, and it's got those huge ridges right above its red eyes. Here is a giant Dilophosaurus figure, and this figure is super brightly colored. Most of its body is a bright red color with some orange and gray detailing throughout, and then the rest of its body is this bright blue with the orange detailing too. And of course it has those huge frills on the side and actually on the top of its head too. This next one is the Lego Triceratops figure in the desert camo color. It's got the dark brown on top, the tan on the sides with the black detailing, and most importantly, the huge frill in the front and the three horns on its head. This next brightly colored Lego figure is, I believe, a Baryonyx figure. It's got some interesting striping over its bright blue body, and the biggest highlight is the bright red head. Notice how much longer and narrower a Baryonyx's mouth is compared to a T-Rex. Let's go ahead and open up the first new Lego set. This is the Baryonyx Face-Off The Treasure Hunt set. I'm gonna put it together and let's check it out. And here is the full set. First up, we've got this adventure Jeep with Owen in the back and Claire right up front. They've also got a little dog called Red right here. And this Jeep is pretty decked out. You can see those huge lights in the front. It's got tools all over. It's got a flashlight and a camera in the back. So it is ready to go. In the back here, we've got Danny Nettermeyer and his little house right in the back that you can actually open up to reveal what's inside. It's set up with a bed and a desk with a computer. And for how small it is, it's pretty impressive. And then of course, we've got the Baryonyx figure in the set. This figure looks quite a bit different than the ones that I've shown you so far in the collection. Its body is a lot more thin and lightweight, but it still has that long and narrow snout. And this one has the gray coloring with the blue detailing. And finally over here, we have the hidden treasure site. We've got the adventurer right here, Sinjin Prescott and then this little setup that is actually hiding the treasure. If you press down right here, it reveals the treasure behind it. Pretty cool, huh? And all in all, this set was 434 pieces. Next, let's check out this set. This is the Blue and Beta Velociraptor Capture Set. And here is the completed set. First off in the back here, we've got Rain Delacorte standing on his bright red truck, and he's even got a sleeper dart gun right here. Over here to the left, we've got Maisie on her bike, and this is actually a little ramp that you can use to ride off with the bike. But the most important part right here is Velociraptor Beta. And it looks like they're standing right in the middle of a trap. You can see some chicken right there. And then these cages actually will close up around Velociraptor Beta. But fear not, Velociraptor Blue is nearby, ready to rescue her baby. So Rain de la Court, better watch out. All in all, this set is 181 pieces. 
Next up, why don't we open up and check out this Carnotaurus Dinosaur Chase set. And here is this completed set. First off in the back, we've got a giant Carnotaurus figure. It has the dark brown coloring with some detailing over its body. And interestingly, it also has the battle damage right on its nose. To the left here, we've got this massive car for driving through the jungle. Up in front is Owen Grady with a sleeper dart gun. And in the back, is Kenji ready for an adventure. And this car is pretty heavy duty. Look at that, it's got six tires in total. And over on the right, we've got Sammy and a helicopter. And you can have the propeller spin on this helicopter, which is pretty cool. Plus it even has a little blaster that you can shoot from. Look at that, that's pretty neat. And all in all, this set was 240 pieces. Next up is another bright T-Rex. This one is in the blue and red coloring. And it also has some lighter blue coloring all over its body too. And I think this figure might have some of the biggest jaws of any of my Lego figures. This figure right here is a Carnotaurus figure. Once again, this figure has some super bright coloring. It's the light blue on the body and the orange on the arms and the head. It also has the black striping with a little bit of brown behind it too. And this figure has a totally different shaped head than the T-Rex. You can see it's got these two huge ridges above its eyes and its eyes are a lot larger too. Next up, I've got a little Triceratops figure in the purple coloring with white detailing and its horns and its mouth are a bright yellow color. This is a bright Dilophosaurus figure in the bright orange coloring. It also has some yellow and red throughout its body and check out that coloring on its frills too. That is pretty cool. Here is a baby T-Rex figure in the bright blue and dark blue coloring. It also has some reflective gold detailing all over its body. That is pretty cool. I've got a Velociraptor over here. This one is in a camo coloring, so most of its body is a soft brown color. It has some gray detailing with an orangish color underneath. Here is a baby Carnotaurus figure. This one is in the light brown coloring with the darker brown and orange detailing all over its body. Check out those huge ridges above its eyes, and it even has some spikes along its tail too. Here's the first winged dinosaur figure in this Lego collection. This, I believe, is a Pteranodon figure. It is in the dark red and yellow coloring. This Velociraptor figure is a lot darker than the last. It is in a dark red and black coloring and it has some gray detailing all over its body. This is a very unique looking Velociraptor figure. It is in the dark purple and green coloring. Kind of reminds me of the Joker's colors too and it has some dark red eyes. I've got some more Triceratops figures in here. This first one is white with the brown coloring all over its body. There's also this one back here that's a bit darker. It's a light green with the dark brown and lighter brown coloring. And on this figure, its horns and mouth are a dark gray color. Here, I think, is my only Endoraptor figure of my Lego collection. It is almost completely black, but it has that iconic stripe running down its side. Plus, it's got some really evil looking eyes and a jaw too. Here are some super bright dinosaur figures. This first one is a neon Indominus Rex figure. I definitely have not seen any other Indominus Rexes that are colored this way. I bet this one would glow in the dark. Plus, I've got this neon green Velociraptor, and it might actually be Velociraptor blue because you can see that blue stripe on its side. Here's another Velociraptor figure, but this one is in a fiery red coloring, and it has some really cool black detailing along its body. It really looks like it's kind of like fire and charcoal. That's pretty neat. This is a T-Rex figure in the red and reflective gold coloring all over its body. Here are two similarly colored figures, but I think they're different species. This first one is a classic Indominus Rex figure. It has the white with gray detailing all over its body. And this one, I think, is actually a T-Rex, although it is colored very similarly. And it has the green around its eyes, too. Let's see here. Next up, I've got a bright Carnotaurus figure with the yellow on its body with the black detailing and the blue on its arms and on its face. And these are my last two Dilophosaurus Lego figures, and I think they're actually identical. They both have the green body with the orange detailing and the bright blue frills. This next figure is the only Stiggy Malak Lego figure that I have, I think. 
It comes in the light brown coloring and it has the brown detailing on its back and sides. And here is my only Lego Spinosaurus figure. This one is in the dark blue coloring with the brighter blue along the top and it has some really cool red detailing all along its body. But the coolest part, of course, is that huge spine on its back. I've got quite a few more Velociraptors in here too. This first one is light tan with the yellow and brown detailing. There's this more camouflaged Velociraptor with the green, darker green, and it has the blue stripe down its side. And then another neon green Velociraptor with darker green detailing on its body and the red all around its eyes. The final neon Lego dinosaur in this collection is this neon green Pteranodon. It has the bright green all over its body and then the darker green detailing and some red eyes. There's also this darker Pteranodon with the red and yellow detailing. Oh, you know, I think it's missing the lower part of its mouth. Whoops. And there's also this gray Pteranodon with the red detailing on its body and the yellow eyes. This figure here is another T-Rex in the brown and orangish coloring all over its body. It also has some pretty cool yellow eyes. And the final figure is this, I think it's another T-Rex figure. This one is in a soft green coloring and it has darker green detailing and striping all over its body. And it has some orangish colored eyes. <laughs> Welcome to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today I am repainting five Jurassic World dinosaur figures. I've got a T-Rex, an Atrociraptor, a Pyroraptor, and more, so let's get started. The first dinosaur figure is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. As you can see, the original painting was brown with some gray detailing on top, so let's see if we can spice that up a little bit. After I got it all primed up, I started with a soft tan color for the underbelly, which is typical for what you'd see in many T-Rex figures. Next, and my favorite part of this T-Rex, I painted the upper body, the head, and legs a jungle green color. I'm super excited for this one as I don't have that many green T-Rexes yet. I think I only have one other. I wanted to make this dinosaur figure look pretty realistic with a camouflage and natural look, so I took a lot of care to blend in the green into the tan for this one. Then, to bring some texture to all those green parts, I dry brushed a soft brown color to bring out all the texture and wrinkles of its skin. For the mouth, I chose a dark pink color. Looks like I forgot to prime some of the mouth. Whoops. Then for the darkest color of this T-Rex, I chose a dark brown to go from the top of the head all the way down to the tail. This will be the last major color for this dinosaur. I also used the brown to paint down the side of the body in random patterns and stripes to make it look a little more realistic, as well as on the front of the legs, which I really thought brought the whole body together. And of course, I brought some of that dark brown onto the face too, especially around the eyes to give it more shading and detail. Then I took a brush and dry brushed a light gray color onto all the brown areas to give that a little bit more texture. I think this made it look a whole lot more realistic and looks a lot better than just the flat brown color. Then for the eyes, after I added another white base, I painted the eyes a yellow color with narrow pupils. I wanted this T-Rex to look intimidating, but not too scary. And for the final touches, I painted the teeth sparkling white and the nails a dark, dark black. And there we are, it is all done. I'm really happy with this T-Rex. And like I said, I'm super excited to add another green T-Rex to my collection. Next up is the Atrociraptor figure from the new Jurassic World Dominion series. This figure has the iconic coloring already, 
I'm sure you recognize it from the movie, but I wanted to replace it with something much more bright and eye-grabbing. So to start it off, I colored the entire dinosaur in a bright yellow color. This will be the base coat for my design. For the next layer, I chose an orange color to paint along the top of the yellow from the head all the way to the tip of the tail. And also on parts of the legs and the arms. It's a pretty similar color to the yellow because I want it to smoothly fade from the yellow into the orange and to the next color that I'll be adding on. Next, for the coolest and most dramatic color of this dinosaur, I added brown to the very top of the body and around the eyes, and I added random stripes going down the sides of the body. It's a pretty dramatic look, and I'm really happy with how it came out. Now that all the big colors are done, I took a lighter brown color and dry brushed all along the lighter parts of its body. Look at how it brings out the texture of its skin all over. For the final touches, I painted all the claws black and the eyes blood red. These dinosaurs are pretty scary in the movie, and I think red eyes are the perfect color to reflect that. With that, the Atrociraptor is all done. Look at how bright it is. This is one of my favorite dinosaurs that I've painted, and I really think it'll pop out from all the other dinosaur figures on my display shelf. Next up is the Jurassic World Dominion Triceratops. The original had a green and brown color combo, and I wanted to switch that up with something entirely different. First, to start off, I painted the belly and the entire underside a light pink color. What color do you think I'm going to combo this color with? If you guessed gray, then you are correct! I had seen a Stegosaurus figure painted a similar way and wanted to try it out for myself. I used this gray to color the entire rest of the body. I'll be doing a few more colors throughout though. Next, to add some more variance to its body, I used a darker gray color all along the top of the body and along the top of the bony frill behind its head. I'm really happy with how this frill is turning out. I chose a light tan color for the horns and the mouth. This is pretty similar to the original. Since these are bony parts of the body, I just think that this color works great with it. I chose a white color for all the toes on its feet and a green color for its tiny little eyes. This is a really tricky part because they're so small, but I think it turned out pretty good. And just a tiny little black dot for the pupils in its eyes. Now for the best part, I chose a bright red color for the bony parts sticking out of its frill because I wanted these to stand out and be the highlight of this Triceratops. I wanted to bring a little bit more red to the body as well, so I also dry brushed that same red color onto the back of the Triceratops. It's pretty subtle though, it's only just enough to make it look a tiny bit more red. And that's it! This one turned out super cool. I really like how the light pink, the gray, and the red all fit together. This is the Sarcosagus figure from Jurassic World. It's not too bad with the painting originally, but let's see if we can spice it up a bit. I started by painting the belly a lime green color. Many dinosaurs, as I'm sure you've noticed already, have lighter underbellies. Next, I painted a camo green color to the sides. This will help it blend into a swamp or jungle setting.
Then for the very top of the dinosaur, I chose a dark brown color. And this color went all the way to the tip of the tail. I bet if this dinosaur was in the water, other dinosaurs probably wouldn't even see it because it looks like a log in the water. I also added some brown detailing around the eyes to help bring out the color of the eyes when I paint those in. Next, I painted the mouth a soft pink color, then I added a darker pink wash to bring out the texture of the tongue and the other parts of the mouth. I'm a really big fan of dry brushing or adding a wash to a figure because this really brings out a lot of the texture. Then I chose a dark gray wash to add to the top of the dinosaur to bring out more texture there, although it is pretty subtle. I think it makes it look just a little bit more gritty, a little more dirtier like it would in real life. Then I added a brown wash to the belly and underside of the dinosaur to bring out the texture of that area and to make it look a bit more gritty too. Then I carefully painted all the claws black. These weren't colored differently in the original version, but I wanted to bring more attention to them. And now for the super tricky part, painting the teeth. I chose a bright white color and I had to do multiple layers. I couldn't even count how many teeth there were on this sarcosagus. And finally, I painted the eyes a bright white color to pop out from that brown background and I chose to give this dinosaur narrow pupils as well. And there it is, it is all finished. This is a super camouflage dinosaur and I'm really happy with how it turned out. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Pyroraptor figure. As you can see, originally it had some pretty basic coloring, nothing too special, it's just mostly red and black. So to start with my own design for this figure, I painted the feet, the hands, and some parts of the face a light gray color. These are parts of the dinosaur that didn't have that many feathers on them, so it's more of just a skin coloring. Now for the best part, I chose a bright fiery red for the bulk of the feathered body. In my opinion, this dinosaur is not meant to blend into its surroundings, so I really wanna make it pop. I painted this red all over the torso, the tail, the arms, and a little patch on the leg right there where you can see the feathers. For the remaining parts of the body, I wanted to try a dark blue color to contrast that fiery red. I used this blue on the legs, on the belly, a little bit of the underside of the tail, and on the top of the head. Now one thing I especially wanted to do was bring out the texture of those feathers all over its body. So I used a dark brown gray wash and I put that all over the red to really accentuate those feather designs. Then I blended the gray color of the skin into the other colors and also dry brushed the gray into the blue parts to bring out the texture of those areas. Those blue parts were pretty dark before, but with that gray on top, you can really see the texture. Next, I dry brushed a subtle yellow color near the neck to add some variance in the color, just enough to make it look different from the rest of the body. And for those huge feathers on the top of the head, I chose orange as a complementary color to the rest of the red, and I added a little bit of yellow at the top to bring out more texture of that big feather on the top. To match that feather on the top of its head, I used yellow for the eyes. And once again, I painted narrow black pupils to give it a more menacing look. For the final touch, I painted all the claws dark black for contrast and the teeth a bright white since those weren't actually colored at all in the original version. And we're done! This is a pretty bright and wild looking dinosaur and totally different from the other ones I've painted so far and quite a bit different from the original version.
Dinosaurs channel, we are checking out a collection of Jurassic World figures that I predict will be in the next Jurassic World 4 movie. And in a little bit, I've got some brand new ones that we're gonna open up. The first that we're gonna check out is, of course, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. How could this dinosaur not be in the next Jurassic World movie? And this specific T-Rex figure is actually from the last movie called Jurassic World Dominion. The next dinosaur that I think will be in Jurassic World 4 is the Spinosaurus. This is actually the Camp Cretaceous figure, and it is even a little bit larger than the T-Rex figure. Also, I really hope that they bring back the Indominus Rex. This new dinosaur was made known from the first Jurassic World movie, and this figure is actually the Battle Damage Edition, meaning with this button right here, you can actually hide the battle damage on the side. And there's a button on its tail for the roaring action. Next up for my predictions, I've got the huge Giganotosaurus figure. We saw this dinosaur in the last Jurassic World Dominion movie. And this figure is actually the super colossal Giganotosaurus. So as you can see, it is way larger than any of the other figures that I have. Up next is the mighty Mosasaurus figure. This dinosaur was from the first Jurassic World movie, and I think it is one of the best aquatic dinosaurs that they've shown. So I hope they bring it back. And with this Mosasaurus figure, you can move all the fins around, and open and close the jaw. Over here, we've got another T-Rex figure. This is a Battle Edition T-Rex. I think it might be from Camp Cretaceous, and you can see that it's got some battle damage slashes right on its side. Plus, the figure is fully posable with its arms, legs, tail, neck, and its head, and it has a button to chomp the jaw. Up next for my Jurassic World 4 predictions is the Therizinosaurus. This dinosaur had an epic battle in the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and I wouldn't be surprised if they brought it back again for another fight. This figure has a fully posable body and an attack button on its tail. Over here, we've got the Carnotaurus, one of my favorite carnivores. This figure features posable legs and arms and an attack tail that moves its head and chomps its jaw. This is another T-Rex figure, but this is actually an older figure, I think from the first Jurassic World movie. It has a fully tan body other than a little bit of gray on its face, and it features posable arms, legs, and an attack button on its back for chomping. I think Jurassic World 4 might also have a Pentaceratops. This is one massive dinosaur and it has one of the biggest frills that I've seen. And this figure has two buttons, one for a head ramming action and the other for a torso swinging action. Here's another herbivore figure. This is a Cynoceratops. Jurassic World has a few different versions of this figure. This is in the light gray with some tan and yellow detailing and it features an attack tail that moves its head. My next prediction is another awesome predator. This is an Allosaurus. I believe this figure was released with Camp Cretaceous and it features posable arms, legs, and tail and has a slide lever action on its back for roaring and chomping. Right over here is another Allosaurus figure. I believe this one was released, I think, from Fallen Kingdom. And this Allosaurus features a dark gray body with yellow detailing. It has posable arms and legs and a single button on its back for the chomping action. All right, let's dig into these brand new ones that I just bought. This first box has a Scorpio Venator and an Iguanodon. These are part of the Dino Trackers Roaring Battle Pack. Here is the Scorpio Venator. I have one other Scorpio Venator figure, but this is a whole new color scheme. It's got dark brown, some orange, and then the light underbelly. Plus, it has a chomping action. And here is the Iguanodon figure. I have a few other Iguanodon figures that look pretty similar to this, but once again, this has totally different coloring. This one features a mostly tan body with the brown detailing along the top of its body. And of course, you can press down on its body for a roaring action. Next up to open up from my brand new figures is this Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus. Let's attach that tail. All right, this figure is looking quite a bit different from many of my other Ankylosaurus figures. First off, it's a bit larger than many of my other Ankylosauruses, and it has much more natural coloring with the dark green on top 
and the lighter underbelly. But best of all, like all of the Hammond Collection figures, this figure is super poseable. It looks like its tail has three or four different joints, so you can move it around in a really lifelike way. Of course, you can move the legs around and pose them in all sorts of ways. And coolest of all, you can move its head around and even open and close its mouth. And next up is the Hammond Collection Dilophosaurus. And here it is. So once again, it is very poseable all over its body. And best of all, this figure actually features a removable frill. So you can actually take it off and replace it with this little piece as if the frills are closed. <laughs> Next up over here, I've got the Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure. This figure is a lot smaller than many of my other Irexes. I also think Jurassic World might have a Scorpios Rex in it. This figure is quite large and it features two attack buttons, one for the jaw and one for arm slashing. And of course, what would be a Jurassic World movie without a Stegosaurus in it? This figure features the brown body with some green and tan detailing and it has the attack feature where you can swing its tail. I also hope that Jurassic World 4 has some Baryonyxes in it. This Baryonyx is a bright green color with some brown detailing and of course has a roar action. And I also have this older Baryonyx figure from Fallen Kingdom with the orange highlight on the top of its head. Here's another dinosaur specifically from the older Jurassic World movies. This is an Endoraptor. This is the basic figure so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Next up, I've got a Carcharodontosaurus figure. This one is in the light tan yellow coloring with some brown and orange detailing. And it has an attack button on its back for chomping its jaw. Here I've got another Dilophosaurus figure. This figure is a lot larger than the Hammond Collection version and it is the basic version so you can move its frills back and forth as well as its arms, its legs, and its tail. <laughs> Jurassic World 4 has got to have some winged dinosaurs too. This is a Pteranodon and this figure features the orange coloring along its wings and the brown body. <laughs> Here's another dinosaur from Jurassic World Dominion that I think might show up again. It's an Atrociraptor. And this figure is the basic edition, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Here's another Ankylosaurus figure. You can see that it's quite a bit smaller than the Hammond collection, and it still has some pretty realistic coloring with the green and the gray and the brown. Plus, there's an action button on this one for swinging the tail. Next up is another Dilophosaurus figure, but this one is battery operated, so let's hear some sounds from it. This figure over here is an old Velociraptor figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It features poseable legs and poseable arms. Next up, also from the Jurassic World Dominion movie, is this basic Pyroraptor figure. And I really hope they bring this one back for the fourth movie. This Pyroraptor is the basic figure, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Over here, I've got another Indominus Rex figure. This one is older, and I believe it was called the Bite and Thrash Indominus Rex. <laughs> Check it out, another Ankylosaurus figure. This one features much brighter coloring all over its body and has a slide lever action on its back to swing its tail around. This figure set is from Jurassic World Dominion. It features a Parasaurolophus and Owen with his lasso. <laughs> Up next is another Pteranodon figure. This one is a whole lot smaller, but it has some pretty cool detailing along its wings and a button on its back for flapping the wings. And of course, one that I'm pretty sure that they'll have in the next movie is Velociraptor Blue. And not only that, but we also saw Velociraptor Beta in the last movie as well. So I think that they'll be bringing these Velociraptors back. I've also got a few more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one has a light green body with a darker detailing along the top and features posable arms, legs, and a mouth. And this second Velociraptor features a dark gray body with yellow detailing and the posable arms, legs, and jaw. My next prediction is a Stigimaloc dinosaur. This figure specifically is pretty small and has a dark body, but some dark purple coloring along its neck and its head. And it features a headbutting action when you press down on the tail. 
We saw some Apatosaurus figures in the last movie, but I think that they might bring back the Brachiosaurus dinosaurs. This figure is a baby Brachiosaurus and has a light green body with a darker green along the top and has a poseable jaw, neck, and legs. Over here is another Parasaurolophus figure. I believe this one is also from Jurassic World Dominion and it features a poseable head, arms, and legs. I've predicted a few other horned dinosaurs, but I think Jurassic World will also have Triceratops dinosaurs in it. This figure is a lot smaller than many of the other horned dinosaurs that I have, and it features battle damage that you can open and close on the side. And here is another Atrociraptor figure. This one's a lot smaller than the one that we saw earlier, but it has a darker red coloring with the gray detailing, and it has battle damage that you can open and close on the side. Right over here is a miniature Dilophosaurus figure. It has the brown body with the blue detailing, and it still has the frills on the front that you can open and close. And last of all is a teeny tiny Spinosaurus figure. It still has the giant spine on its back, and it has a chomping action as well. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge collection of Jurassic World Apex Predators, meaning that they are at the top of the food chain. And I've actually got a brand new Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Jurassic World Legacy Collection that we're gonna open up first. Here is the brand new T-Rex and the baby T-Rex. I already have one of these T-Rexes, but I think this is the first of the green T-Rex that I have. So I'm super excited to check this one out. As you can see, most of its body is a dark green color. It's got the lighter underbelly and it's got the black detailing right along the top. And it's about as adjustable as my other T-Rex figures. So you can move the ankles, you can move the legs into different positions, move the tail around. And then the neck you can also move around so it can look in different directions. And of course there's the button at the top of its head for the chomping action. This is a really cool looking figure, and I'm sure that the T-Rex is one of the best known apex predators. Here we've got a dinosaur that you can't find in real life, but I'm sure it would be an apex predator if it was real. This is the Indominus Rex, and this is one of the big figures. You can see that it's pretty adjustable. You can move the legs into different positions, and that causes the dinosaur to look up and down. You can see it moves its neck back and forth like that. This figure also comes with the two action buttons, one for the chomping, and then one on the back for the slashing action. This is another T-Rex. This one is mostly brown. It's got the dark brown on the top, lighter brown on the sides, and then a tan on the bottom. And this T-Rex figure has a tearing action, actually. So when you press this button on its back, it tears just like that. And there's also a second action button that swings the tail back and forth. Here is a Carcharodontosaurus with blue coloring on its body and the orange and brown detailing on the top. This also has one action button for chomping. Plus you can adjust the arms and the legs and the tail as well. Next up, we've got two Endoraptors. And obviously these dinosaurs aren't from real life, but if they were, I can guarantee you that they would be an apex predator. I just remember them from the Jurassic World movie. These were some of the most feared dinosaurs. This first Endoraptor is a more basic figure. You can only move the arms, the legs, and the tail, but you can adjust the neck or open and close the mouth. But on this second Endoraptor figure, this one is super adjustable. It's got a bunch of points of articulation. Again, it's a double jointed tail. You can bend the knees, you can bend the ankles. You can adjust the arms fully and you can open and close the mouth too. Right over here, we've got two Sucomimuses. This one is a blue with yellow detailing and this one is yellow with brown detailing on the top. This one has two action buttons, one for chomping and one for the tail. This Sucomimus only has one action button that activates the jaw. Right up top here, we've got a smaller figure, but still a fearsome predator. 
This is a baryonyx. It's got the green sides and belly and the brown top. The arms and legs can articulate and move around. And there's an action button on its back for chomping. Back here, actually, we've got another baryonyx. This one has a brown body and sides with a dark gray blue coloring on the top and the bright orange detailing right on the top of its face. And just like the other figure, the legs and the arms can move too. Here is an older Jurassic World figure. You can see that this is another T-Rex. It's got the full tan body and on its head, it's got some gray detailing. It's got those yellow eyes and an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Here we've got a newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. This is a Yang Chuanosaurus. It's got the green body, a lighter yellow underbelly. It's got some brown detailing along the top and then that bright orange piece right on its head. This figure is pretty adjustable with its arms and its legs. You can see that moving the legs dips its head down like that. And the tail controls the jaw and can move the neck around too. Back here is another newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. This is a Scorpio Venator. This figure has an orange belly and sides. It's got some white detailing right along the top and a dark gray blue color right along the top of its head. This figure is fairly adjustable. You can move the arms and the legs. And when you push down on its legs, it does a chomping action. This one is another T-Rex. This T-Rex though is the battle damage edition. It's got the button on top that you can use to turn on and off the battle damage, which is a pretty awesome feature. This figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the ankles, you can move the legs up and down. The tail only has one joint in it though, but the neck of this T-Rex is really adjustable. You can have them look in all directions and you can open and close its mouth really easily. This is a Carnotaurus figure. It's got the clay red body with the darker detailing spots on the sides and the brown right along the top. You can see that the Carnotaurus has a lot of bumps and ridges in that spine right there as well. And with this figure, the tail controls the head and there's a button as well to open and close its mouth. Here's another newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. And I think this is one of my favorite newest dinosaur figures. This is the Rajasaurus. This figure also has a chomping action when you press down on the legs and you can adjust its arms, its legs, and even twist its tail around a little bit. I love this dinosaur's head. You've got the horn right at the top and you've got this really cool smaller spine right on its neck, these spikes. It's really cool. Here we have another very well-known apex predator. This is a Velociraptor. This specific one is actually Velociraptor Charlie from the Amber Collection. So this figure is very adjustable. It can move all the different parts of its arms and legs, and you can adjust its head quite a bit as well too. And it's even got this headpiece right behind its face too. This is another ginormous T-Rex, and this T-Rex is pretty adjustable as well. As you can see, you can move the arms up and down, you can adjust the leg position, and instead of moving the neck and face up here, you actually can control it with the tail by swiveling it. This is another Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This one is Velociraptor Echo. This Velociraptor has the light brown coloring as well as the dark black right on top. And just like the other Amber Collection Velociraptor, it is very adjustable on all different parts of its body. You can even move the claws on its feet up and down. Back over here, we've got a smaller Indominus Rex figure. This is an older Jurassic World figure. It's got the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And this figure is fairly adjustable as well. You can move the legs a little bit, you can move the arms just a bit and the tail controls the mouth and the neck too. We've got a few more awesome looking Baryonyxes in here. This first one has a slide action for different roaring sound effects. And this Baryonyx doesn't have any buttons on it, but you can use the tail to move the head around. Right over here is a well-known predator from Jurassic World. Once again, it isn't a real dinosaur, but I can guarantee this would be an apex predator. This is the Scorpios Rex. This figure has two action buttons on its back, one for the mouth 
and one for the claws. And the rest of the figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the legs quite a bit and you can adjust the neck to have it look around. And the tail is spring-loaded too, so you can fling the tail back and forth with those poisonous quills. Back here is a huge water dinosaur that I'm sure you recognize from the first Jurassic World movie. This is the Mosasaurus. This figure is ginormous. It's got a dark blue body on the top and then a white underbelly. And all over its body, you can actually see these like white specks, a little bit of detailing. And there's a few things that you can move on this figure. You can move the fins around, you can swivel the tail back and forth, and you can open and close the jaw, which is a pretty big jaw, I'd say. Probably fit a few small dinosaurs in there. Ah, here's another popular apex predator. This is the Spinosaurus. Did you know that the Spinosaurus is the largest known carnivorous dinosaur that existed? These were even bigger than T-Rexes. This figure has an adjustable tail. The legs are pretty movable, as well as the ankles. You can move the arms up and down, and you can actually adjust the neck quite a bit as well too. Here is another awesome T-Rex Predator. This looks to be very similar as the first T-Rex that I unboxed in this video, but with different coloring. See, it's got the brown body and the darker brown on top. And just like the other T-Rex, adjustable tail, move the legs and the arms, and you can move the head around too. Here's another dinosaur from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. This is a Quetzalcoatlus. I didn't really know how big these dinosaurs were until I saw them in the new Jurassic World movie. These things were huge and they took down that plane. This is a Ceratosaurus. I think we actually have another one with different coloring. This one is a dark green color with black detailing on the top. And this one is a light gray with red and a darker gray detailing on the top as well. And they both have that slide action button for different sound effects and different roars. I think the sound effects are the same though. This one's an interesting looking dinosaur. This is a Cryolophosaurus. Look at that interesting crowning on the top of its head. This Cryolophosaurus has a dark blue body with white, red, and bright orange detailing. And you can move the arms, you can move the legs, and you can use the tail to move the head around. Here is another mighty Carnotaurus, the red side and the dark, it's almost like a purple color on the top. This dinosaur has an adjustable tail and adjustable legs and arms, and there's a button on the top for the chomping action. Ah, here's a species I don't think we've seen in this collection yet. This is an Allosaurus. It's got the dark green body with the red and white detailing. See, it's got those spikes right along its spines up top, and you can adjust the arms and the legs and the tail. And it's got the slide action button for different roars and chomps. This bright red dinosaur is a Metriacanthosaurus. It's a pretty interesting looking one, it's smaller than most of the other figures. It's got the bright orange detailing on the top of its head and the action button on its back for chomping. Next up, we've got, I believe, a Majungasaurus. This is a super colorful dinosaur. It's got the dark green, yellow, and blue on its neck. It's got those teal eyes. And like many of the other dinosaur figures, you can use the tail to move the head and neck around. This is an Albertosaurus with the Battle Damage Edition. As you can see, it's got two different types of battle damage. One that's right there on the top of the plastic and one that you can actually open up. This has the stomach and ribs that you can close down and then the skin that you can do to cover all of the battle damage. That's pretty cool. The rest of the figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the legs, arms, and tail as well as the neck and you can open and close the mouth manually. Over here is the Carcharodontosaurus with a blue body and orange and brown detailing. Look at all those spikes right along its spine too. It's interesting how they're all different heights. With this figure, you can move the arms, legs, and tail, and there's an action button on top for chomping. Here is another Allosaurus 
with different coloring and different actions too. Check out those spikes right along its spine. You can see the two action buttons right here, one for the mouth and one for the arms. And I think we actually have one more Allosaurus in here with different coloring. This one is gray with yellow detailing. You can only move the arms and legs in this figure aside from the action button on its back that controls its mouth. Right over here is another Albertosaurus. This figure is about medium sized and it does not have any battle damage like the one we saw earlier, but it's still pretty adjustable. You can move the arms, the legs, and you can use the tail to control the face. Here is another Carnotaurus. This one is a newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. As you can see, it's got the broken horn in the front and this figure is smaller, but pretty adjustable. You can move the legs, the arms, twist the tail, and you can move the head and jaw around too. Here are a few small Dilophosaurus figures. This first one is mostly gray with red detailing and an action button on the tail that activates the frills. The second one is a bit more brightly colored. It has a green body and two different tones of orange, as well as the action button to activate the frills. And last but not least, we've got a bunch of smaller Velociraptor figures. Oh, actually. This is another baby T-Rex, just like we saw at the beginning of the video. But the rest of these figures are all Velociraptors. So let's check them out one by one. First, we've got the tan and brown Velociraptor. This one has a slashing action, spring-loaded torso, so it swings back and forth. This Velociraptor has a brown and yellow body with battle damage that you can open and close on the side. This next Velociraptor has a red and dark purple body, and you can move the arms, legs, and tail, as well as the mouth, but there's no special features on this figure. And these last two figures are similar in movement, but with different coloring. It's got the blue body with the yellow and gold coloring. This one has a dark brown color with orange on the top. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out my collection of the rarest Jurassic Park and Jurassic World figures. First, I just bought some Jurassic Park sets off of eBay. The first one is the Alan Grant with double-barreled Bola launcher from the Jurassic Park new series 2. Let's check this out. So there's Dr. Alan Grant. We've got a variety of tools here as well as a little dinosaur. And way up at the top here, you can see that it's some type of claw contraption or something used for trapping dinosaurs, it looks like. Now, I'm not gonna open this up because this is a collectible and I wanna keep it in this condition since it's unopened right now. But I still have another figure from eBay that I just bought that we're gonna check out as well. This is the Compstagnanthus, or at least I think that's how you pronounce it, codenamed Lasher from Jurassic Park Chaos Effect series. And this dinosaur is super colorful. It's got some light blue-green over its body with the black. It's got some yellow. It's got some orange. It's got blue right on its nose. So this will be super cool to add to my collection too. And as you can see, it is a combination dinosaur of a Compsognathus, a Stegosaurus, and an African tree frog. That is pretty wild. As you'll notice with basically all of these figures, these figures are discontinued, so you won't be able to find them new anywhere. You might be able to find them on eBay or something like that. But this first one is a Jurassic Park Allosaurus. And this figure actually has multiple pieces of battle damage that you can completely take off. And this front battle damage actually has multiple layers. You can take off the ribs to see the stomach underneath, and then you can just cover it back up with the skin, just like that. You can also remove the thigh on this dinosaur, see the flesh underneath, as well as on the tail. You can rip off a piece of the tail and see the bone and flesh underneath too. Back here, we've got one of the original Tyrannosaurus Rexes from Jurassic Park. This figure has some pretty unique coloring over its body. It's got the clay red with the black spots and stripes. It's got the lighter underbelly. It originally had sound effects, and its whole body is a soft rubber, which is a common theme with the older figures. Right here, we've got a T-Rex from Jurassic Park The Lost World. 
This is the Thrasher Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it also has a soft rubber body aside from the arms and the legs. And with this T-Rex, you can actually wiggle the tail to control the face and the neck. Move it back and forth. All right, I know you've been keeping your eye on these huge T-Rexes on the side. This super colossal T-Rex is one of a kind. And that is because it is actually custom colored. It's got a light tan body all around. It's got some interesting shadowing and detail all over. It's also got some super dark red eyes and some interestingly colored teeth too. So those are darker teeth than what's normal. So while you may be able to get a super colossal T-Rex, you will not be able to buy one that is this color. Next up for the one of a kind super colossal dinosaurs is this T-Rex. And this has some of the craziest custom coloring out of any figures that I've seen. It looks like a fire T-Rex. Got the bright red over its belly and sides. It's got the glowing orange right next to the black and then the black top. This is a super cool one of a kind T-Rex. And for our final one of a kind custom colored super colossal dinosaurs is this Velociraptor. This I think has some of the best custom coloring out of any figure that I have. It is so detailed and so well done. It's got the black body with these brown stripes and there's even these little gold specks along its brown stripes as well. My favorite part though are the eyes. These are incredibly detailed. It's like a gold eye, but then it's got red towards the center and then the black pupil. You will not be able to find another super colossal velociraptor with this coloring anywhere. Here we've got a Jurassic Park Stegosaurus with battle damage right on the shoulder. Mm. This figure has a somewhat soft rubber body. The tail is especially rubbery, so you can swing that back and forth with those spikes at the end. And it has a very natural green and brown and light tan coloring all over its body. So it really blends into the jungle. This giant T-Rex, I believe, is the Jurassic Park Lost World Bull Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex has some pretty unique coloring with this green-blue color on the sides. It's got some light brown on its legs as well as along the top of its body. It's got some marble eyes that are green. And I don't have the piece anymore, unfortunately, but originally it was able to swallow, I think, a cage that had a man inside. So this thing could actually swallow humans or dinosaurs or whatever you want and you can release it from the stomach right in there. Next up of my rarest figures is this Jurassic Park Lost World Pteranodon that was nicknamed the Steel Beak. This figure's pretty old and fragile now, but it's one of the few figures that has a fabric wing on it, as well as spring-loaded joints for the wings, so it can swing forward and it swings back just like that. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Parasaurolophus. This figure's in pretty good condition for how old it is. It's got the light tan body with the darker brown stripes along the top. And this figure actually has an action button on its back used for running. Here we've got the original Jurassic Park Triceratops. And this figure has some huge battle damage on its side. You can see some flesh and some bone in it as well. This figure also has the soft rubbery body like many of the super old figures and it has an action that when you squeeze its stomach, it swings its head upward. Here is a dinosaur figure that although it's more recent, it's still pretty hard to find and pretty rare. This is an extreme chomping Spinosaurus from Jurassic World. This figure has the dark ground body with the light underbelly and the red spine and face. And of course, it comes with a button at the top of its head for the chomping. Right here is another one of the original Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rexes. This is a smaller figure. It probably only stands about nine or 10 inches tall. It's got some battle damage on the side and it has the soft rubbery body all throughout aside from its arms and its legs. This super bright dinosaur, I believe, is from Jurassic Park The Lost World and is actually a Chaos Effect Ankyloranodon. This figure has some super bright colors, with bright green and the bright purple, plus it's got a super bright orange eye as well. And there's actually a hidden action button on its back used to move its tail. 
over here is another more recent figure from Jurassic World, but is still pretty rare and pretty hard to find. This is the hybrid Indominus Rex. It's got the bright red over its body, it's got some gold, and the classic gray color for the Indominus Rex. Plus it has a few action buttons, the first that you press down to stick out its spines, and the second to pull down the arm, and it roars. Check this one out. Here is another discontinued Jurassic World figure. This figure is fairly rare and is actually a hybrid Tyrannosaurus Rex. Check out these spines that pop out on the top of its head and on its back. Plus, another unique feature about this Tyrannosaurus Rex is this unique coloring right along the side of its body. And the action button that springs out the spines also activates the jaw. This is another Chaos Effect dinosaur from Jurassic Park. This is the Velociraptorix. And this dinosaur has some really unique features. What stands out the most to me are these wings right on the Velociraptor's arms. That's super interesting. And it's got these spikes right along the top of its back and its head as well. And this Velociraptorix has an action that when you pull the leg, it swings its arms up and down and its head moves as well. Next up, we've got another figure from Jurassic World. This is a hybrid special edition Ankylosaurus. And the most special part about this figure is that it actually has part of its shell that you can take off to reveal the normal shell underneath. This removable shell is super bright and reflective. It's got some bright green and purple in the spikes as well. And you can just plop it right back on. Next up in my rare figures, we've got the Jurassic Park Amargo Spinus. I think this figure looks somewhat similar to the unopened figure that we saw at the very beginning of this video. It's got the long neck, it's got the spines all over, and it's got a few action buttons actually that when you move the leg, it actually sticks up its spines on its back, on its neck, and it opens its jaws too. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Chasmosaurus. This figure looks similar to a Triceratops. It's got many of the same features. It's got the horns in the front. And this figure also has an action that when you pull its leg, it moves its head up and down. This is another Jurassic World hybrid figure. This, I believe, is a hybrid between a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops. But it's also got some super bright and unique coloring with the bright blue on its side, the dark blue on its legs, and the gold right along the top and its horns, too. Here is another Jurassic World hybrid figure. This is a hybrid between a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a Dilophosaurus. And once again, it's also got some super bright coloring with the bright orange on its sides. It's got some gold along the top too. This is a Jurassic Park Spinosaurus. And let me tell you, I think it looks a lot different than the Spinosauruses that Jurassic World is releasing now. But it's still got the huge spine along its back, of course, and it has some pretty bright coloring. It's got the bright green along its body with the gray as well. Next up is a fairly large figure from Jurassic Park. This is a Utah Raptor. It's got the orange body with the black detailing along the top and the lighter underbelly. And a nice detail on this figure is that you can actually move the claw up and down on its feet. Over here, we've got a few Jurassic Park Baryonyx figures. These are quite a bit different than the new Jurassic World Baryonyxes that are being released now. Their bodies are a lot more thin. They've got shorter legs, and it looks like they've got longer necks too. Next up, we've got two Velociraptors from Jurassic Park with different features. This first one is a lot smaller, and you can move the arms and the legs, but there's no action button. But on this second Velociraptor figure, there's an action button that when you move the leg, you can hear a sound effect. It's really quiet, so you probably can't hear it on the camera. But its head also used to move up and down as well. Here are some other interesting dinosaurs from Jurassic World. This is a Dilophosaurus with battle damage on the side, and it is super brightly colored. We've also got a smaller Spinosaurus with battle damage on the side that you can control by moving the tail around too. And for the last two dinosaurs of my rare collection, first we've got a Jurassic Park baby T-Rex with a broken leg feature. And we've also got this, I think it might be a Baryonyx, it might be an Allosaurus, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's from Jurassic World. 
and it's got the battle damage on the side, and the tail controls the head too. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out my entire collection of Jurassic World, Primal Attack, and Savage Strike figures. First up, we've got the Extreme Chompin' Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It's a medium-sized T-Rex figure, and of course it has the button on the top of its head for chomping. Next up is the Primal Attack Control and Conquer Carnotaurus figure. It's got a bright orange red body and it has a chomping action as well as a head moving action. Here is the epic Roarin Tyrannosaurus Rex figure and it's one of my favorites. It's quite a lot larger than the T-Rex that we just saw. It's got a light brown body with the dark brown on top and you can use the tail to control the head and open and close the jaw. This next ginormous figure is the Destroy and Devour Indominus Rex. This figure's even bigger than the T-Rex figures that we've seen, and it has two actions. First, it has an arm attack, and it has a roaring jaw action. And now let's grab this huge aquatic dinosaur. This is the real feel Mosasaurus figure. This dinosaur was one of the stars of the first Jurassic World movie, and you can open and close its jaw, move its fins, and as you can tell from the name, it has a much more lifelike feel than many of the other figures. It's a bit softer. Up next is the Bite and Fight Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. Now this T-Rex may look similar to the previous ones, but it has a totally different attack. It has a Terran attack with its mouth. See how its neck twists all the way to the side? And it also has a secondary button for swinging the tail back and forth too. This figure is really wild. This is the Primal Attack Massive Biters Tarbosaurus. Got a ton of crazy spines running all the way up from its head to its tail. It has some pretty cool coloring. I like how it's subtle along its body and then bright red along its neck. And it has a jaw chomping action too. This figure is another Primal Attack Massive Biters figure. This is the Seats Miko Rerum, and it's got some pretty crazy coloring and details. Check out all those little spikes right on the top of its head and on its back. And of course it has some super bright orange and blue coloring too. And best of all, it has a jaw chomping action as well. Up next is the Primal Attack Control and Conquer Carnotaurus Toro figure. It has a dark brown body, a lot darker than the Carnotaurus that we saw earlier, and it has the jaw chomping action and the head moving action too. This is another massive biters from the Primal Attack series. This is the Albertosaurus figure. This figure is pretty recognizable because of the green all over the body with the orange stripe on both sides. And of course, it has the jaw chomping action and the head moving action too. <laughs> also from the massive biters toy line is this Sarcosuchus figure. This figure is really long. It's probably around a foot in length. It's got all sorts of texturing and detailing. You can see two rows of spikes right on its back that go all the way down its tail. And of course it has a long and narrow snout, very similar to an alligator's, and it has the jaw chomping action too. Aww. Here is the Primal Attack Sound Strike Majungasaurus. And as you can hear, it comes with sound effects, although it seems to be a little bit broken at the moment. This is a bit smaller of a figure, but it still has some really cool coloring and tons of little spikes and details all over its body. And while there's no button to open and close the jaw on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around. Up next is the Primal Attack Sound Strike Irritator. This figure has a similar body shape to a Baryonyx, although it does have a little spine that runs down its back. And on this figure, there's no button to open and close the mouth, but you can use the tail to move the head around. And check out those sound effects too. Here's another Primal Attack Sound Strike figure. This is the Sinoceratops. And this figure comes in the light gray with some tan detailing. The coolest coloring and detailing is this bright orange and yellow along its face and the super black eyes. And this figure has a head attack action. Check that out, and sound effects too. Next up for Primal Attack is this Sound Strike Parasaurolophus figure. It is bright yellow, it has some reflective pink along its back and its legs, and the best part is that it has a head attack action. 
Also from the Soundstrike series is this Pteranodon figure. This version is in the dark orange and maroon coloring along its wings, and it has two action buttons, one to operate the mouth with sound effects, and the other button to operate the wings. Here is the Primal Attack Soundstrike Cryolophosaurus figure. There are other versions of this dinosaur, but this one is in the bright yellow, brown, and orange coloring. And there is no button to open and close the mouth, but you can use the tail for a head attack action. Here's another Pteranodon figure from Primal Attack. This one has some even cooler coloring, I think. While it's mostly brown, it has some really cool green striping along its wings and a darker green coloring along its face. And just like the other Pteranodon figure, there's one button to operate the mouth and another button to flap the wings. Here is the Primal Attack Edmontosaurus figure. This figure stands on all four legs. It's got some light tan and dark green blue coloring with the brightest coloring along its face. And like many other figures, this comes with a head attack feature. Now here is a Savage Strike figure. This is the Styracosaurus. It's a pretty small figure. This version comes with the light green and brown with the bright orange and yellow detailing along the face. And this figure has a head thrash attack that you activate by pressing on the tail. Up next is the Pachycephalosaurus figure from Savage Strike. It's colored bright green on the underbelly and orange along the rest of the body. And it has a head ramming action that you activate by pressing on the tail. Up next is a Velociraptor figure from the Attack Pack series. It's dark blue with some red detailing along the top and it has a fully poseable body. From the Savage Strike series is this Velociraptor Charlie figure. It's bright green and has some darker green along the top. And the coolest part of all is that this figure has a claw slashing action by pressing this button on the top. Check it out, here's another Velociraptor figure from the Savage Strike series. This is Velociraptor Delta. This Velociraptor is colored a much more dark blue-green color, but just like the other figure, it has a button on its back for the claw slashing action. Over here, I've got two different Stiggy Malak figures. This one is from Jurassic World, and this one is from Camp Cretaceous, both from the Savage Strike toy line. They've got quite a bit of different coloring along their whole body, but they both still have that super hard shelled head for headbutting with the spikes right along the back. And both these figures have a head ramming action when you press down on the tail. Next up from Camp Cretaceous Savage Strike is this Plesiosaurus figure. It is way smaller than the Mosasaurus figure that we saw earlier. It's got a much longer neck and a mouth that you can open manually, and there is a button on its back to move the flippers up and down. Here is a wild looking winged dinosaur. This is the Tapihara from the Savage Strike series. It's got some crazy cool coloring and texture detailing along its wings and a super bright head and frill right on the top of its head. Plus there's a tiny little button on its back to flip the wings up and down. I've got two other winged dinosaurs. These two are from the Attack Pack. And I believe they are called the Rampharynchus dinosaur. One of them's a bright green color with some darker green on the body. And the other figure has some white, dark blue, and orange. And both of them have a super long and narrow snout with tons of huge teeth inside. <laughs> This is the Sauropelta figure from the Savage Strike series. It's got a fully armored body all over and it's got tons of spikes along its shoulders and it has a spring-loaded spike attack action. Next up is a Dilophosaurus figure from the Savage Strike series. This figure features the giant frill right beside its head and an attack button when you press down on the tail. Here is the Minmi figure from the Attack Pack series. Like the Sauropelta, it has a fully armored body and it's got spikes all over its back instead of the large ones on its shoulders. This next figure is from the Attack Pack series too. This is the Trudon. It's got a pretty small body. It has an interesting spine running along its back and on the top of its head too. Here is a Dimorphodon figure from the Attack Pack series. It has bright orange and red on the underside of its wings while the rest of its body is a dark green color and you can manually open and close the mouth too. Next from the Attack Pack is this Herrerasaurus figure. It's got some pretty bright coloring with the soft green and darker green and light blue coloring 
but right along the top. And this figure is fully posable too. <coughs> also part of the Attack Pack series is this bright green Draco Rex. There's some gray striping along its back and on its legs, and it's got tons of spikes along the back of its head. This is the Calavasaurus figure from the Attack Pack series. It stands on all four legs and has three different colors. It's got bright orange on the top, some light blue along the tail, and the rest of its body is a dark blue color, except for its mouth, which is bright blue again. And finally, from the Attack Pack series is this tiny little Ornithosceles figure. Most of its body is a dark brown color. It has some yellow detailing along the top with the gray underbelly. This dinosaur really looks like it could run fast. <laughs> This is a collection of 100 Jurassic World figures, and I'm gonna be showing you all of them today. Let's get started with this giant Spinosaurus figure. This specific figure is actually from the Legacy Collection, and they don't make this one anymore, so it's pretty hard to find. It's got the dark green coloring, different than all the other Spinosaurus figures, and of course, the jaw chomping button. Next, we've got a big Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. I believe this one is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got a light brown body. Its arms, its legs, its tail, and its head are adjustable. And there's a button for chomping. Next up, we've got another T-Rex figure. This one's pretty similar to the one that we just saw, except it's got some slightly darker coloring, darker brown on the top, and of course, the jaw chomping button. Over here is an herbivore dinosaur. This is the Pentaceratops. It's got a huge variety of horns on its head and on its frill as well. And it's got two action buttons, one to move the head up and down and one to swing the torso back and forth. Moving right along here, we've got the Sound Surge Carnotaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. Let's check out these sound effects. Up next is a figure that I bought pretty recently, actually. This is the Hammond Collection Concavenator. Check out that really cool coloring with the orange fading into the brown and the blue and the orange and red stripes along the top. Up in front here, we've got another giant T-Rex figure. This one is a bright orange color and it has the same movements and actions as the T-Rexes that we saw earlier. This is an Indominus Rex figure, but it's actually not made by Hasbro. It's made by a model company. So it looks a lot different and has a lot more detail than many of the Hasbro figures. I love those little spikes running along its back and on the top of its head. Right next to that, we've got a weird looking dinosaur. This is the Sarcosuchus. It's got a super short and super long body. It's got some really cool spikes that run all the way down its back to its tail. And you can use the tail to control the head and chomp the jaw too. Aww. This next one is an Oranosaurus from Hasbro. I believe this is an herbivore dinosaur. Definitely doesn't look like a scary predator. And it's got some cool coloring on its body. Plus an action button right on the side to move its head up and down. I've got a super bright dinosaur in here. This is a Triceratops. It looks a lot less realistic than many of my other figures, but it's still pretty cool. It's got some red on the top and the blue. Kind of looks like a baby Triceratops. Way in the back here, we've got another Indominus Rex figure, but this one looks quite a bit different. It's got really short legs and a giant head. This is from the Rowdy Roars collection. And it actually has a few different actions. You can get it to shut its mouth. And you can use the tail to hold the head up. Way in the back here, we've got a Krylophosaurus figure with the dark blue and orange coloring. And this figure comes with sound effects that happen when you move its tail around. Up next, let's see, let's go with this Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green and black coloring. And it's got a slide lever action at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. This right here is the Jurassic World Dominion Triceratops figure. It's got some unique coloring with the orange in the front, right next to the dark green, and then some lighter green along the back of its body. Plus, it has a roaring action when you press down on its back. Ooh, check it out. Here is a Therizinosaurus figure. 
This has some bright red and some soft blue coloring. Of course, it's got the huge claws on its hands and it has a really long neck and a bunch of small teeth in its mouth too. Over here, we've got a few flying dinosaurs. These are smaller figures. I believe that both of these are Pteranodon figures. This first one's got some cool reflective gold coloring on its head. The rest of its body is like a dark green color. And the second one is more of a grayish color. It still has some yellow on its face, but this one actually has a button on its back to flap its wings. Looks like we've got another big dinosaur in here. This one looks quite a bit different. It's still made by Hasbro, but it's a different toy line than the rest. But check it out, it still has a chomping action when you press down on its body. Looks like we've got yet another T-Rex in here. This one is the dark green with black detailing along the top and is one of my personal favorites. Its limbs are adjustable just like the other T-Rexes and it has the jaw chomping action. Check it out, here is the second Therizinosaurus of the collection. And this one is made by Hasbro for the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got a bunch of cool feather texturing all over its body with the red stripe. And it has a jaw chomping action that you can activate by pressing the button on its tail. Oh, look at this, way down here, we've got a Lego collection. Uh, this might be a Carnotaurus, I think, because it's got those two huge horns at the top of its head. It's got some pretty crazy coloring overall though. It's got bright blue, some neon orange. Check out those yellow eyes too. Here's another Pteranodon figure, but it is way larger than the ones that we saw earlier. You can unfold its wings to show the full wingspan and check out the detailing along its body, which is pretty neat. And it's got two action buttons on its back, one for the jaw and one for flapping its wings. I've got another big Lego dinosaur in here. This one might be a Baryonyx, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what dinosaur species you think this is. In the back here, we've got a good old Ankylosaurus figure. This one has the blue top with the spikes all over the top and the sides and a slide lever action to swing its tail around. Here is a Dilophosaurus figure. This is a basic series Dilophosaurus, so there's no action button, but it's still got some ginormous frills in the front with a huge yellow crown and a dark red body with adjustable limbs. Looks like I've got some Velociraptor figures in here as well. Let's check out these three. This first one is an extreme battle damage Velociraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. Check that out, you can turn it on and off. There's also the Velociraptor blue figure with opposable legs, arms, and mouth. And there's this crazy looking Velociraptor that has some really cool detailing along its back. Plus, it's got some golden eyes too. Up next, we've got the Majingasaurus. This figure is a little bit bigger than the Velociraptor figures and it's got some yellow, blue, and green on its body. Plus, you can use the tail to move the head around. In the back here, we've got what looks like a Brachiosaurus figure with dark red and some yellow detailing along with the black too. Check out those green eyes. I found another Velociraptor figure. This is an older figure. It's got the tan with the green striping, but unfortunately there is no action button on this figurine. Here's another Velociraptor figure from the same era. This one has the dark green with black stripes on the top and the yellow underbelly. But once again, sadly, there is no action button on this figure. Check out this weird looking dinosaur. This figure is designed to hang onto your finger and it actually is battery powered with sound effects and with movement. Over here, we've got the Sauropelta with the light green and dark green coloring. Here is the Zunoceratops figure with the yellow and gray coloring. It's got the two huge horns on its head. There's also a few Pachycephalosaurus figures in here. This one has battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And the other Pachycephalosaurus actually has a headbutting action when you move its tail. Here's another winged figure. This is a Dimorphodon. It's got the fiery red and orange coloring on the underside of its wings and the dark green along the top. Oh, look at that. There's actually another Sauropelta figure right here. This one has the brown and clay red coloring. 
Next up is a small figure. This is a Gallimimus, although it's got some pretty detailed coloring running along its back all the way to its head. Here's a Stiggy Malak figure. It's got a hard head just like the patchy cephalosaurus, but it's also got some spikes coming out right behind it. And on this figure, you can use the tail for the headbutting action too. Ooh, right over here, we've got an Atrociraptor figure. This one is tan and it is in the stealth pose. You can see it's crawling along the ground. This one looks to be like a Kentrosaurus figure. This one was not made by Hasbro, so it looks quite a bit different but it's still got those iconic horns coming right outside of the shoulders. Up next is a miniature Dilophosaurus figure. Check out that super bright and colorful frills. Now here's a teeny tiny dinosaur figure. This is from the Snap Squads. And this is a Triceratops figure. Look at that, it's even got teeth on the inside. That's a nice little detail. And the last figure in this first bin is the Elephrosaurus figure. I think this one's pretty recent, came out in 2023. Let's dive into our second bin of dinosaur figures right here. But before we do, let's check out these officially licensed Jurassic World Heroes of Gujitsu figures. This first one is a Mosasaurus figure. It's got a chomp attack action. It looks like it has fish on the inside or something like that from that picture. So let's open it up and check it out. Here we go, and wow, this thing is extremely squishy and stretchy. It also comes with that chopping action, so you can snap its jaw shut, just like that. But the biggest feature of this is its gooey body. Super squishy, it's still got the texture like a normal Mosasaurus, and it's got its fins as well. But when you squeeze it, let's see what's on the inside of it. All right, there is fish bones in there. That is super crazy looking. Wow, they're just floating in all that goo. It's pretty relaxing to squeeze, actually. That's really cool that they actually put something inside the goo, so you can only see it when you expand it. The other goo jitsu figure that I got for Jurassic World is this Pyroraptor. It also has the chomp attack action, and instead of having goo on the inside, this one is super stretchy. So let's open it up and see. Oh yeah, this one feels totally different from the Mosasaurus. It's actually like pretty hard. You can squeeze it and it moves, but it doesn't have the goo on the inside like the other figure does. You can open and close its mouth for that jaw chomping action. And this one has some feather texturing on its body as well. It has some huge feathers on its arms. Now this figure is supposed to stretch really far, so let's see if we can stretch it. Oh, look at that. There are some different things on the inside of even this figure. Wow, that is super stretchy. It's really strong and hard to stretch. Let's see if we can find out what is that. It looks like feathers are on the inside of this figure. All right, let's get back to our regular figures. I've got an Albertosaurus figure right here with the green and the orange striping on the side. It also has a chomp button on its tail too. Here is the Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure. It's got the classic gray coloring with a little bit of brown and spikes all over its body. And of course, some really cool sound effects. Here's a pretty new figure. This is the Siamosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It stands on all four legs. It has some pretty cool paint detailing on its body. It's got a huge spine, just like a Spinosaurus, and a jaw chopping action by pressing the button on its tail. Back here is a Carnotaurus figure with a dark brown and black coloring. It's got a little bit of battle damage right on its nose, and it has posable legs, arms, and a tail, and you can use the tail to move the head around too. Check it out, here is the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. This one is way more poseable than the standard figures. And I think this one looks a bit more lifelike because of how detailed it is. Look at all that wear and tear on its horns. That's really cool. This is the Tarbosaurus figure. It's got a mostly dark body. It has some black striping along its back. And the brightest part is its neck and its chin. It's also got these really cool huge spines that run all the way down its tail. And of course, a button on its tail for the chomping action. <laughs> Up next is the Carcharodontosaurus figure. This figure too has some spikes running down its back to its tail. And it also has an action button for the chomping action too. Plus, all of its limbs are posable too. From Jurassic World Dominion, this is the Rajasaurus figure. It's a bit smaller than some of the other Predator figures, but it has a really cool chomping action when you press down on its body. 
This is an aquatic dinosaur. I believe it's called the Kronosaurus. It's got some huge teeth in its mouth, as well as some teeny tiny ones. And it has an action button on its back so you can swing its head back and forth. Over here, we've got another Carnotaurus figure. This one looks quite a bit different though. It's a lot more bright in color. Its spikes on its back are this gold color. The horns are also a bright color too. And it has this really big action button on its back for chomping. Way back here is an herbivore. This is the Cynoceratops with the light green and the bright yellow coloring. And this figure has a roaring action when you press down on its body. Oh, look at this. This is actually another Cynoceratops figure, but this one is in the gray and tan coloring. And instead of just a simple roaring action, it actually has a tail that moves the head around with sound effects. Here is the Parasaurolophus figure. It's mostly yellow, it's got some brown striping with two action buttons. One controls the head, moves it up and down, and the other button controls its tail. Check it out, we've got another Lego Jurassic World figure. This one, I believe, is a Brachiosaurus figure because it's got a huge body that walks on all four legs and it's got this really long and flexible neck. Pretty cool, it's got some cool slash detailing on its body and it's pretty large for a Lego figure. Next up is the Metriocanthosaurus figure in the yellow and green color. Let's check out that chomp action. Back here is a model T-Rex figure. Looks like it's an orange color. It's got some really cool muscle detailing all over its body. And here's another Lego figure. This one though is a T-Rex. Check that out. It's a dark brown color. It has some darker brown detailing all over its body. And you can even open and close its jaw. This next figure is not a dinosaur. It is actually a human inside one of those balls from the Jurassic World movie that you can drive around in. It's pretty cool. This is a baby Brachiosaurus figure with the gray and purple-ish color on the top. Well, let's check out these Stegosauruses next. I've actually got quite a few in here. This first one is a newer one. It's got the brown, green, and clay red coloring. And it has the action when you press down on its spine, it swings its tail back and forth. Down here somewhere, oh here it is, is the baby version of that Stegosaurus. It's got the same type of coloring with the green and the clay red on the top, but it is a whole lot smaller. Look at that, even its tail is really small. Let's see what other Stegosaurus is. Here's one. This Stegosaurus is brown, it's got some tan and green, and this one has two action buttons. The first moves its head up and down, and the second button does the classic tail swinging action. And we've got another Triceratops in here. This one is in a gray and darker gray color. It's got the light pink underbelly. And of course, the tail slashing action. Oh, look at that. I've actually got another one with identical coloring in here. So this one is actually just a twin. Here's another large dinosaur. This one's actually really cool. This is a Velociraptor beta figure. And it's pretty cool because it has some lifelike movements. You can have it walk side to side like this, and you can even have it chomp by pressing down on its body. I've got another Ankylosaurus figure in here. This one has the gray, green, and brown coloring, plus a button for the tail swinging action. I see a few Baryonyx figures in here. This first one, I believe, is Baryonyx Grim, or Limbo, maybe? I actually can't remember their name. It's got the bright green coloring, and the action button on the top for chomping its jaw. Here is the second Baryonyx figure in here with totally different coloring. I love the bright blue coloring along the top of its head and the slide lever action for the roar and sound effects. And the third Baryonyx is right here. It's got battle damage on its neck and on its leg. And of course it has a button for the chomping action. Looks like I've got a few Ceratosaurus figures in here as well. This first one I think is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the iconic red coloring running all the way up to its head with the slide lever action for roaring and sound effects. And this other Ceratosaurus is actually a Hammond collection figure. It's got some pretty similar coloring to the Ceratosaurus we just saw, but its limbs are way more poseable, and I think there's a bit more texturing on its skin too. 
hidden in the bottom here is another Carnotaurus figure. This one is from the Fallen Kingdom collection, so it's actually a bit older than a lot of these other figures. And it's got the button on its back for the chomping action. Let's see, what's next? Let's go with this Allosaurus figure. We haven't seen that many Allosauruses in this collection, but this one is probably one of my favorites because of its color. Plus, it's got those little spikes on the top of its head that run down its back. And of course, a slide lever action for roaring with sound effects. Here's another ginormous winged dinosaur. I believe it's actually another Pteranodon figure. Once its wings are opened up, you can see that there are two buttons, one for its mouth and one to flap the wings. This next figure is the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. Let's press that button on the top of its head. Oh, you know what? Here's another Atrociraptor figure, and I got this one pretty recently too. It has some really cool bright red coloring along its arms and on its shoulders, and it's got this interesting backpack tracker system on it too. Down at the bottom here, here's another one of those figures that fit on your finger. But just like that, they rest on your finger, and they have sound effects and movement too. Look at that, even its eyes blink. This next figure is a classic Triceratops figure. It's got some bright red coloring though, which is a cool feature. I've also got another Stegosaurus in here. It's got some pretty realistic coloring and some bright spines. Aww. Here is a very small Parasaurolophus figure. It's got some cool brown coloring with some lighter brown on the sides, and it looks like it has some tiny yellow eyes. <laughs> This next figure down here, I believe, is called a Protoceratops. This is a pretty weird looking dinosaur. It's got some bright coloring all over its body too. Up next, I think I've got a couple Herrerasaurus figures. This first figure is a battle damage one that you can open and close right on the side. And this other figure is not a battle damage edition, but it has some gray and white detailing. I've also got a bright Monolophosaurus figure right here, and it has a chomping action that's activated by moving the tail. This one's pretty cool. This is actually a Dilophosaurus without the frills, which as it turns out, may be fictional from the Jurassic Park movie. I've got a few more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one looks a lot like Velociraptor Blue, but it's not made by Hasbro. Still got the iconic blue stripe running down its side. And there's also this similar looking Velociraptor. It's got some white with some black spots on its body and a little bit of red along the top of its head. And this one is made by Mattel. It features some bright red coloring with purple stripes running down the sides. All right, only a few left. This one, I'm actually not sure what it is, but it looks like it's holding an egg. Maybe it's stealing it. Comment below if you recognize this dinosaur species. Here's a crazy looking dinosaur that walks on all four legs. It looks kind of like a sarcosuchus, but I'm actually not sure. And this figure is really feathered. Check out all that feather design on its tail and on its arms and its back. And it's got a pretty wild looking head too. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.